The movie opens with a man named Gabriel, who contacts the police to report a bomb hidden under a bridge. Afterward, he readies his weapons for a mission. Gabriel is a skilled thief, evident from the photos and building plans on his wall, detailing entry routes. Meanwhile, a family is getting ready for their day. Jacob talks to his wife, Christina, about their financial situation. Then, they head to work. At the bank where Jacob works, he notices an increased police presence, linked to the bomb report. Unconcerned, he proceeds to deposit the money brought in by the police into the vault. Later, Jacob assures his employees that they should continue working as usual, despite the unconfirmed bomb threat. Suddenly, his phone rings. Christina informs him that she'll pick up their daughter, Sophia, from school due to the panic caused by the bomb news. Shortly after, all the phones in the bank stop working. This is when Gabriel, wearing a mask, enters, shoots a guard, and orders everyone to get on the floor. Gabriel hands bags to the bank staff to collect money, and then takes Jacob and his colleague to the vault to get more cash. Later, Gabriel gives two bags to Jacob and his colleague, and they set off red flares. The police begin to arrive, but Gabriel manages to escape before they can catch him. The police immediately take Jacob in for questioning, since he's the bank's manager. In the police office, Detective Robert discusses the robbery with Agent Fields. Christina inquires about her husband's whereabouts, and Detective Robert advises her to wait for the investigation to conclude. Agent Fields then questions Jacob about the recent robbery, while showing him pictures of other bank robberies. He believes it's the same person behind them, but Jacob remains silent, still traumatized by the event. That night, Jacob continues to dwell on the memories of the robbery, causing him distress. The following day, his neighbor James approaches him, offering comfort and sharing his own experiences as a former policeman. James kindly extends to listen if Jacob ever needs to talk about his problems. When Jacob sees the news, he informs his wife, Christina, that he's taking a leave of absence as instructed by his superiors. Christina isn't pleased with this decision, considering Jacob has been working at the bank for a decade, and one incident has now led to consequences. Meanwhile, an elderly man named Frank in a hospital room is eager to leave, despite the nurse's efforts to calm him down. Fortunately, Frank's son, Gabriel, arrives promptly and reassures his father. During the night, Jacob is disturbed by a dream of the robbery. Unable to sleep, he begins investigating the police reports on the masked robber using his laptop. The next day, he confides in James about his relentless thoughts regarding the robbery. Although Jacob didn't see the robber's face, he distinctly recalls a large steel key used to lock the door. James shows him numerous key images on his laptop, and eventually, Jacob identifies one key that seems familiar. Continuing their discussion, Jacob and James speculate about the robber's escape plan. After some analysis, they discover a faint resemblance to the robber's face in a photograph. James encourages Jacob to clear his name, but Jacob chuckles, thinking about catching the robber on his own seems like a long shot. Back at home, Jacob continues examining documents related to the robbery. Christina reminds him to maintain some distance from Sophia. While he's busy, Sophia's illness suddenly worsens. Thankfully, Christina promptly administers an injection, and Sophia's breathing stabilizes. Meanwhile, Gabrielle manages to hack a password to unlock a small safe, retrieving a signal disruptor. Shifting focus to James, he believes the robber has likely escaped far away. But Jacob is convinced the robber will return because his motive is money, not jewelry. At headquarters, Gabriel is seen practicing his shooting skills while trying to crack a cell phone hacking device. Meanwhile, Jacob and James are working together to identify the location of the next robbery. Jacob decides to investigate various suspicious locations and is given a radio by James for communication. While checking places, Jacob notices someone opening a rolling door in an abandoned building. His suspicions rise, so he enters the building and realizes that the person is Gabriel, the robber. There are photos and robbery plans on the wall, confirming Jacob's suspicions. He gathers evidence and starts tailing Gabriel. Jacob informs James about Gabriel's address during his pursuit. James then contacts his FBI friend, Casey, to verify the address provided by Jacob. At the same time, Jacob continues to follow Gabriel, who is tracking an armored truck. 
When Gabriel takes a different route, Jacob sticks with the armored vehicle, confident that Gabriel will return. Indeed, Gabriel reappears and disables the armored vehicle's engine with a small digital bomb. Jacob immediately alerts the police. Gabriel attacks the armored truck driver and forces him to open the rear door. Jacob attempts to intervene from behind, but Gabriel overpowers him. A battle ensues when the police arrive, but Gabriel manages to escape on a motorcycle and reaches a factory. There, he creates chaos as a distraction to escape in a car. In his haste, Gabriel drops the stolen money in the parking lot. The police secure the crime scene for investigation, while Gabriel destroys evidence like bank photos to cover his tracks. At the hospital, Detective Robert delivered news to Frank about his burned-down factory, but Frank wasn't concerned, trusting his subordinates to handle it. Meanwhile, Jacob stashed a bag of money in the yard storage area before joining his family for dinner, sharing stories with them. Later that night, Gabriel went to the scene to search for the dropped money, but couldn't locate it. Meanwhile, Fields questioned a patient named Johnson, but Gabriel suddenly appeared, shooting Fields dead. Threatening Johnson with a weapon, Gabriel demanded to know who had been following him. Panicking, Johnson contacted Jacob, claiming he would give a statement to the FBI the next day. However, Gabriel shot him after the call. When Jacob arrived at the hospital, Gabriel contacted him and threatened the safety of Christina and Sophia. In desperation, Jacob reached out to James, warning him that Gabriel intended to harm his family. James rushed to Jacob's house, but Gabriel had already set up CCTV cameras, leaving James powerless. Jacob returned home, and Gabriel demanded that he bring the bag of money to a specified location. Before leaving, Jacob received the meeting location from James, who also handed over his weapon. On the other hand, Gabriel prepared his own weapon for the meeting. While James, monitored by the cameras, saw Casey's assistance in helping Jacob. Returning to Jacob, Casey and his colleague provided a listening device before Jacob headed to the meeting. During the meeting, Jacob inquired about his wife and child, and Gabriel revealed they were in a truck. Without hesitation, Casey and his colleague rushed towards the truck to rescue Christina and Sophia. As Gabriel opened his bag, a bomb exploded, prompting him to fire back. Jacob managed to evade the blast and return fire. The exchange of gunfire involved two police officers. Meanwhile, Casey and his colleague successfully rescued Christina and Sophia. James arrived shortly thereafter, prioritizing Sophia's deteriorating condition, and James searched for Jacob as they lost contact. While Jacob pursued Gabriel, Gabriel continued fleeing until James shot him dead. Jacob wanted to express his anger toward James for not finding his wife and child, but James reassured him that Christina and Sophia were safe. Jacob immediately approached his family in the car to confirm their well-being. Detective Robert aimed to review the recordings as evidence, but James took responsibility for everything, being the one who shot the suspect. A while later, Jacob and Christina resumed their normal lives. They received a letter containing a necklace from James, for which Jacob felt immense gratitude. Jacob attended a meeting with the police, now working as a policeman, thanks to James's help. Moral lesson from the story, when hunting down bad guys and uncovering mysteries, the strength of your friendship that saves the day, and if a robber drops money in a parking lot, well, let's just say that's his contribution to the local economy.